I started working at Sun Studio when I was 16, and so I really dived headfirst into the history and the um, kind of connecting the dots. You know, Sam Phillips started Sun, but it led to Stax, it led to fame, it led to all these other people and all these other musicians and stuff. Everyone knows the Beatles, but then you realize they were going to come to Stax and they were heavily influenced by Stax records and by Sun records and they covered Carl Perkins. So it's all this like crazy uh, tree that comes back to Memphis. So for me, I've always been like a big history fan. So it was not only was it the music, but it was like the story behind it all that for me just kind of consumed me from a, a pretty young age. If I'd been born anywhere else, I would I would, wouldn't be doing this. It, it, Memphis has really kind of left a big uh, mark on me. I have family in Ohio, and there's not much to do in Ohio, <laughs> especially when you're like 12. And uh, my cousin had just gotten a guitar, and I thought I'd never seen one in person before. And I just started, I wasn't a prodigy, I was horrible, but it really consumed me, like, the, the thought of this thing and so when I got back my parents got me a guitar and I started playing with guys around at school but for us the the goal wasn't to like play shows I don't know I think we knew we weren't good uh, but uh, deep down but the goal is to get in the studio that was just to hear ourselves back and we fool with stuff recording at home but like knew we wanted to go to somebody and they bought me two hours of studio time at Sun. That was the minimum at the time. And so we we're like 14 or 15. My dad drove us there, and dropped us off. And the engineer there, was his name was James Lott. He'd been there about 25 years. He had a beret, smoked incessantly, cussed. He was probably a little drunk at the time and uh, was just the most amazing person. He treated us like we should have been there when we definitely shouldn't have been. And I watched James work in the faders and man the controls, and I was just, that's when I was like, that's really cool. Because I knew I wasn't going to be like a great guitar player or anything. I just enjoyed playing. But that, I saw that and I was like, that's what I want to do. And so I kind of bugged him and he told me to come back and intern. So that's where I started interning at Sun shortly after that um, with James. I worked with him for a long time. Everyone produces differently and. Um, um, and you do it, I find that it, you have to change it depending on every artist. You know, some artists need a, um, a strong voice or a strong hand in the studio. Some artists know what they need and you're just to, to kind of be a shoulder to lean on. Or I mean, it's, it's a million different ways to produce. But really just being there for the person and for the song and not having an ego and listening. Doing more listening than talking or playing and stuff, I find. Jim Dickens would say, their name gets really big on the front, my name goes really small on the back. So it's not about me, it's about the artists and the songs. What's dying is learning how to record people live in a room, a big band, and knowing how to mic it, where you get that beautiful live sound, but you're not like, the cymbal's not overpowering the vocal mic or blah, 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 blah. Jeff Powell, who works here too, we do a lot of classes. And a lot of times the main thing they want us to teach is how to record drums and everybody in a room together and it's there's not like a secret to it but it's it's knowing how microphones shape and getting the drummer to play a certain way and it's not a plug-in i think a lot of people now want presets or plugins and it's so funny there's there's a classic piece of gear that's two knobs and there's plugins of it recreations of it and there's presets like you can go to like all these great engineers presets it's two knobs it's a gain knob and a compression knob and it's like you need a preset for bass, like you just turn the knob and listen. Being digital and having instant recall and all these things, in, and because we have these engineering videos and stuff, people watch those things, but what you don't understand is you do it differently every time. Uh, very rarely do I get something to work twice for the same person, and nor, like we talked about, nor do I want to. I want it to be different, so it's always kind of pushing yourself. And, and I think if they get out, out of the bedroom and more into studios and, and trying different situations and different gear and things, they, you get that creativity thing instead of the, the preset mind. Every time the phone rings and someone calls and asks me to work on something, I'm kind of shocked and excited. So it's, a, it's just very lucky to get to do this. What's up, y'all? This is B.O.B. This is G-Eazy. I'm Mo. This is Julia Michaels. This is Logic. Make sure you subscribe to the Recording Academy channel. Flex.